halfway into the semester and it's midterm season at Temple. There are teams this fall season that hold records in the A category, while the teams might have some work to do. Maybe some office hours would be good for them. I know that all too well. We'll have the Philadelphia Inquirer beat reporter for Temple Football here to talk about the Owls 2-3 and three start. Plus. And I'm Jesse dimitch Levey, reporting from Pearson McGonagall Hall, where I break down the latest results from the volleyball team that's knee-deep in conference play. Owl Sports Update is live, and it starts right now. Hello and welcome into another edition of Al Sports Update. He's Eric Jesperger. I'm Matt Rainier. We've got a jam-packed show for you here today. Now, it was a rainy weekend for Temple Athletics, but, you know, we still got to have a line here with some Temple football. Absolutely. The Owls went down south for their second road game this season after having three straight games at home. In the previous road game back in week one, the Owls failed to find the end zone. They were hoping to change that down in Memphis this past weekend. A clear afternoon in Tennessee. Owls opening with the Tigers in conference play for a second straight year. They won this match last season. Down Memphis quarterback Seth Hennigan's pass broken up by Elijah Clark. One of a season high three broken up passes in the game for the Redshirt Junior. Owls on offense and E.J. Warner finds Adonica Sanders a first down and more setting up a 47 yard field goal attempt for Camden Price which is good for Price's first field goal good as an Owl as the Owls went into the first half at halftime, up 3 to nothing, Temple shut out intact until Memphis' is running back, Brandon Thomas, barrels into the end zone for the Tigers' first score, that being the first offensive touchdown allowed by Temple's defense in over two games. A field goal and that Hennekin lone touchdown pass put the Tigers up by two scores in the fourth quarter when E.J. Warner throws one of his three interceptions. Warner completed 18 of his 37 pass attempts for 245 yards. Thomas punched in his second touchdown on the day here for the Tigers to solidify a 24-3 victory for Memphis, dropping Temple to 2-3 on the season. got some, some first time players that are out there that are making some mistakes. I mean, I would love to see, uh, you know, all 11 guys playing perfect football, you know, every single snap, you know, it just, you know, we're not quite there yet, but, you know, we're not questioning intent. We're not questioning, you know, the will uh, to want to win and do right. You know, we just got to lock in focus in those pressure situations. And uh, we felt, we felt good going into the, the second half. You know, but in that third, in that fourth quarter, we we let up 24 points. We just got to be better as a team, better as a unit. I think you know we, we got places to work everywhere. You know, uh, pass interferences, you know, little things like that. Uh, I wouldn't say that you know they were doing anything different. I think you know they might have had a little bit of a you know an idea when Quits is in the game. We might you know tend to run the ball a little bit more. Um, but the same fact, like I said, it's you know just guys getting the body on a body and doing their job up front because it doesn't matter how well you game plan for somebody. If you do your job on your side of the football, it, it won't matter what they do. Even at two and three, Temple is an improved team with still a long way to go. One reason for this improvement has been an aggressive defense, but one unit that is overlooked is the special teams, particularly punter Mackenzie Morgan. Al Sports Update's Max Green has more. Temple football pulls players from across the country, but this year the Owls have gone international with their punter Mackenzie Morgan from Australia. He's one improvement in special teams. Our units are growing. Some of them are, are producing at a higher level, but there's growth every week. Morgan has come a long way to get to North Broad, starting in Australia with stops at NC State and Weber State. And that's probably the main difference is just a coach that backs you in and a coaching staff that is really good. and 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 locks me for what I am. That new coaching staff has improved McKenzie's numbers. He's averaging over 40 yards a punt and putting him in contention for the Ray Guy Award, given to the best punter in the nation. Certainly would be 
a reflection of the whole punt unit. Mackenzie has had a lot of help along his journey, starting in his native country of Australia. It was there where Mackenzie joined Pro Kick Australia, a punting academy that has produced several NFL talents, including Philadelphia Eagles punter Aaron Sipos. Pro Kick Australia is almost like a, it's, I would, I would call it a punting fraternity. Uh, everyone knows everyone. Um, Punting in general is a fraternity. Morgan took the tough journey to get to where he is now to continue his dreams of a punting career. And as he quoted Conor McGregor, it's the road most traveled, but here I am standing here as mad as a brush. And he's doing it. Reporting from Edberg Olsen, I'm Max Green, Al Sports Update. The Owls are 2-3 and three heading into their bye week, and this gives us a chance to kind of step back and break it all down for you here today. Now let's bring in... Temple football beat reporter for the Philadelphia Inquirer, Javon Edmonds. Javon, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure to be here, gentlemen. Javon, the conference opener was not the outcome Al's fans anticipated going into the half up 3 to nothing. What were your ultimate takeaways from Temple's Week 5 loss? Temple is not going to be able to be a run-first team like Stan Drayton envisioned when he first got to North Broad. The team ranks 126th out of 131 qualifying teams in total rushing, so that's out of the window, which means E.J. Warner has to drop back more. And the more he drops back, the more he gets hit, and the more stale Temple's offense looks. Now, Temple's defense has been showing up for these games as they rank high in the nation in most statistical categories. The offense, however, it's been almost the polar opposite. You know, with a freshman QB and a sluggish run game, how can the Owls find some balance on both sides of the ball? Well, the defense is the crutch of the team at the moment, so offensively, you've got to try to find ways to possess the ball, whether that be through run pass options. E.J. Warner is the son of a Pro Football Hall of Famer. He can digest reads quicker than anybody else around here. He gets the ball out quickly. He should have been sacked way more than he has this season. So RPOs, misdirect some front sevens, open up some lanes for the running backs, and get some quick slants to your receivers in space and let your playmakers do their job. Giovanni touched on a lot of what the offense can do coming up out of the bye week, but more specifically against UCF, how can the Owls even up their conference record when they face off against UCF coming out of this upcoming bye week? Well, UCF beat Temple real bad last season. Their passing team that actually has a physical run game also. Temple's front seven should be able to handle them, but in the secondary, Jalen McMurray, Alex Odom, Jalen Ware, Dominic Hill, those guys are going to have to play clean games. Elijah Clark, who had three PBUs last week, He's going to have to keep being fundamental uh, and sharp with his game if they stand a chance against UCF. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have today. Javon, thank you so much for coming on to the show. And now time, here is the game versus UCF, which comes in prime time coming out of the bye week. Central Florida is currently the top-ranked defense in the AAC for points allowed, while Temple has the second-lowest scoring offense in the conference. So points will be hard to come by in this one. Tune in next Thursday on ESPN and follow the game live on Twitter with Al Sports Update. Coming up, we look at the volleyball team and its impressive record in close game situations with one player in particular that has stood out from the rest of the pack. Al Sports Update will return in 90 seconds. Welcome back to Al Sports Update. It may have been a rainy sideways, but as they say, the show must go on. Temple Field Hockey taking on the Drexel Dragons. The Dragons would get on the board early with this corner shot leading to this goal by Taylor Mason who gets it just past the glove of Molly Frey. The Owls were quick to respond though with this goal from McKenna Burkhart off an assist from Annie Judge. The game in the second quarter and later on in the game in the third quarter now it's Burkhart once again getting a penalty stroke here and she will capitalize. Drexel would tie this game up late in the fourth quarter but the Owls would get one last chance. In the, with no time left on the clock, it's Tess Muller sending it to the back of the net to seal the win for the Owls. Final from Howard Field, Temple 3, Drexel 2. The Owls have followed up their two-game losing streak with two last-second wins over the weekend. Nico Orleans had the game-winning corner over Georgetown with under two minutes remaining in regulation, that final being one to nothing. And, of course, a Tess Muller corner goal, which you just saw with the clock at zero, a walk-off win over Drexel against former Temple head coach Susan Chufo-Bennett. The win versus Drexel is due in large part to the women who stepped in after Chufo Bennett left the program. I got to speak with head coach Michelle Batiste on the progress made by the team over the last two years and her personal growth as a head coach. Sunday's last second win over Drexel is the latest example of what's turning into a memorable season for the Owls. 9-3 overall, 2-1 in the Big East. Not bad for a first-time head coach in her second year, but you can't look at Michelle Batiste as just another rookie coach. 
Having her as a coach has just been really amazing for many aspects. She teaches us a lot off the field and off on the field. Coach Vatisse is a former three-time All-American at the University of Virginia. She spent eight years with Team USA, winning four gold medals in the process. Vatisse became interim head coach when Susan Chufo Bennett abruptly left the program in the summer of 2021. And that winter, she took over altogether. I felt that they believed in me deeply, where I felt like there was a lot of growth on my individual end. Yeah, and I just felt like I was developing. I felt like I was being challenged constantly. Coach Vatisse's time with Team USA played a big role in her becoming a head coach, but it's also had a significant role in affecting her coaching style, as she and her staff are working tirelessly to make sure that their players are improving both on and off the field. For me, I'm trying to instill competitiveness in every aspect. Um, I'm trying to instill a belief in themselves and a confidence in themselves. You can, with a lot of hard work, uh, chip away at what you want to accomplish. Kind of like being the best person we can be on and off the field and always competing. You know, that's something she talks about all the time. We're competing, competing every day to be the best version of ourselves. And this is certainly shown on the field. The Owls' nine wins on the year are more than the team had all of last season. Batiste came to Temple in 2019 as an assistant head coach. She was promoted to associate head coach after that season, and then it got interesting when she took over on an interim basis just weeks before the start of the 2021 season. After a strong conference record interim, that was taken off the title, and Batiste has been in charge ever since. And her success includes a national ranking earlier this season to go with a 9-3 record so far in 2022. The volleyball team hosted Tulane at McGonagall Hall for its third conference match of the season. Temple in white beginning a rally with the green wave. She was denied once, but won't be denied again. Taylor Davenport earns the kill, one of her career high 24 kills in the match. After dropping the first set, the green wave stormed back to take a 2-1 set lead. A 24-22 fourth set victory for Temple forced a winner takes all fifth set, which included two lead changes and a seven point run for the Owls. Fellow sophomore Magdalena Rogalska feeds Davenport, who gives the final blow to the Green Wave in the fifth and final set. A three to two set victory for the Cherry and White, who are now five and one in five set matches on the season. It's been a bit up and down for the Owls this season. Temple followed that win over Tulane with losses to Houston and ECU. We head over to Pearson McGonagall Hall to hear from Jesse Demich Lubay, who has the very latest on Linda Hampton Keith's squad so far this season. Hey, Jesse. Thanks, Eric. On our new coach, Linda Hampton Keith, the volleyball team is just below 500 at the halfway point of the season, sitting at 7 and 9 overall and 1 and 4 in the American. Hampton Keith's message to our players all season long has been resiliency believing that will be the difference between the top and bottom half of the conference. So far, it's been a bit of an uphill battle for Temple as they sit ninth out of the 11-team conference. Although Temple has been unable to deliver in closing moments in the, its last two matches, the Owls will look to change that as they enter the back end of their season. So far, one player that stands out, Magdalena Rogalska, the sophomore setter from Poland, has amassed an impressive 253 assists over the first 16 matches, including a season-high 58 in last night's five-set loss against ECU. And we'll look to carry that momentum as they enter the business end of the season. The Owls have only played five of their 16 matches at home, going two and three, but they will have the chance to play seven more times in front of the Owl faithful before the season wraps. Reporting from Pearson McGonagall Hall, I'm Jesse dimich Louvet. Guys, back to you in the studio. Thank you, Jesse. Moving on to the fencing strip, word is out that former fencing coach Nikki Frank has been awarded the David P. Montgomery Lifetime Achievement Award. The honorary award will be given to Frank on October 26th. Al Sports Update's Chloe Connor has more. Another day, another award that former Temple fencing coach Nikki Frank will be receiving to honor her fencing career. Yes, you heard correct. October 26th is the official day that Frank will be handed down the David P. Montgomery Lifetime Achievement Award, as PHL Sports had made the announcement. 
Spencer Constasa Dimas has a few words of encouragement. First of all, like, I'm so proud of Coach. Um, I feel like it's unbelievable how much Coach has achieved in these 50 years. Um, she definitely deserves it because she's an incredible person. Frank is still greatly remembered for her time with Temple's fencing team, and Coach Sam and Temple's present fencing coach also speaks on the successes of Coach Frank. I mean, Nikki's an icon uh, in the fencing community well beyond what she's done here at Temple. And I'm just proud to be able to continue to represent her through the program. After bringing 37 Temple fencers to earn 66 NCAA selections, Temple's fencing team still holds a soft spot in the heart of former coach Nikki Frank as well. I, I miss uh, being with the girls every day. I miss that energy and I, and I miss them. They're a great group of uh, young women. And Frank is humble when asked her thoughts on being awarded such a principled award. I was quite surprised. I, it was nothing that I had expected. I actually uh, knew David Montgomery, and he was a, a wonderful person, a very kind. Dr. Frank, former fencing coach, had left a great impact on Temple's fencing team, and October couldn't come fast enough for her to be honored. I'm Chloe Connor, Owl Sports Update. After the break, we highlight a new dancer on the Spear Squad and how he is helping make history at Temple. And Temple announces a new Hall of Fame class. Stay tuned. Owl Sports Update will be back in just 90 seconds. In one month's time, the college basketball season is underway. The men's team opens in early November with three straight home games. Al Sports Update was on the scene to speak with head coach Aaron McKee and players this week ahead of a highly anticipated season. Michael Merville has more. With the men's basketball season opener against Wagner just one month away, the Owls come back with maturity, something that they had been missing for most of the McKee era. The Owls will have several returners from last year's team that finished 17 and 12. This includes redshirt sophomore Khalif Battle, who came down with a season-ending foot injury in the Owls' seventh game against LaSalle. You know, just uh, be able to get out here, uh, shoot with him after practice, play against him, play one-on-one -on -one with him, and stuff like that. So uh, we make each other better every day. While there are familiar faces returning. Temple picked up four players through the transfer portal. Um, if these guys want to be here, they want to be a Temple Owl, we'll, we'll have you. I think myself, along with my staff, we do a wonderful job of pouring into these kids. One notable standout transfer is Taj Thweet. Previously at West Virginia, the 6'7 sophomore is childhood friends with returning Temple sophomore Jalil White. I was there when he first started playing, so just to have him back around, uh, to cheer him on, see him get better and great. With Khalif Battle returning after a foot injury, along with several new additions to the squad, the Temple Owls are looking to be one of the top teams in the American Athletic Conference. And again, it's always been my goal is to be at the top of the conference. So I think, you know, with, with our experience and, and, you know, riding our defense, I think we can, we can be right there in the conversation. The journey to the AAC tournament has started with practices as friends look forward to the season opener on November 7th versus Wagner. Reporting for Al Sports Update, I am Michael Murphy. The Temple cheerleaders and Diamond Gems will be front and center at home basketball games, but they have some other work to do with one major competition of their own, and the Diamond Gems will be doing this with a new member of the team. Al Sports Update's Megan Wiley is live at the studio set to tell us more. Hey, Megan. Thanks, Matt. The Temple Diamond Gems have been dancing since 1999. The dance team made program history last year down in Orlando, and now they're preparing to do it again, this time in search of gold. The Temple Diamond Gems have been entertaining fans before, during, and after football and basketball games for many years. But this is a team that's been competing on its own as well, preparing for a January trip back to Nationals in Orlando. I think as the years go on, we start to get a little bit more representation. Specifically this year, we just got priority registration. The Gems finished fifth overall in last year's competition, their highest finish ever. The better we do each year at Nationals, like the dance team placed super high in hip hop last year. Um, the cheerleading team got second by 0.1 for game day. The Diamond Gems knew in order to get up on the right foot for Nationals, they need to bring on some extra talent. But the extra talent is the impressive story itself. The Owls head to Nationals in Orlando this January and are bringing along two male dancers. This is the first time in the group's long history that two men are on the team. Vaughn Scriber is a freshman and one of the newest members. He's also just the second male athlete on the team alongside junior Nasir Pittman. 
And I went to my dance studio. I joined when I was like five. So what is that? Put me at 14 years. I'm going strong. I think nationals is really like what I'm excited for. Like I really came to this school. That was one of the reasons that like it brought me here. Just knowing that you get to go compete in front of all the crazy teams and all the best teams. Like I think that's what I'm most looking forward to. Scriber and the rest of the Diamond Gems will continue training for Nationals, which is just four months away and counting. Nationals is about a week long, and the dance team will compete in three different categories in the D1A division in Hip Hop, Jazz, and Game Day. And this happens about the second week in January. That's all from the studio set. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Megan. So many sports are competing in the fall this season, so for us, it was pretty, pretty easy to find some outstanding performers. This week, we head to the offensive side for our power play. Matt, my power play pick this week is women's soccer defender Katie Kortz. The graduate student had two attempts, five goals in their first win of the season against LIU Saturday. Good for her first career two-goal game. A defender letting it up on offense, certainly it must be a good week, and certainly for her, as she was named Temple's Athlete of the Week. Certainly is for her. You know, for me, though, I'm going to highlight a sport that we've covered a lot here at Al Sports Update. For me, I'm going to highlight Temple Field Hockey's own Tess Muller. She was credited for the game-winning goal against Drexel, which pushed the Owls to their 9-3 record on the year. And looking at it here from a different angle, Nika Orleman, so what a great feed from her. We'll get a different angle in a minute. But I just want to remind the folks at home, there was no time left on the clock when she made this shot. If they miss, they go to overtime. And Drexel, they had all the momentum in the world on their side. They just tied up the game about three minutes before this play. But Tess Muller said, you know what, not today. Preventing the play, and she did a great job there. Fantastic, great effort for her, and a great win for the Owls. Matt and I show a little bit of love on both sides of the ball this week in our power play picks. Great pickup this week, but now we're heading to our final break. On the other side, we'll show you those women's soccer highlights of their first one of the season. Plus, the 2022 Temple Hall of Fame Athletics has their list ready. Inductees is ready to go. Stick with us. We'll be back in 90 seconds. Welcome back to Al Sports Update. The women's soccer team, they were seeking their first victory of the season against the LIU Sharks last weekend. Both teams remained scoreless until midway through the first half. This strike from Carly Steinberg put the Owls on the board. And then less than three minutes later, Catherine Cortese, she gets past the goalkeeper to make it a 2 to nothing lead. And then just later on, seven minutes into the, later in the first half, this corner kick from Phoebe Holland and Jillian Allgood heads it in for another score. Temple would add one more goal before Sumaya Tagba ices the game in the second half. The final from Howard Field, Temple takes down the Sharks 5 to nothing for the team's first win on the year. And the Temple Athletics Hall of Fame has some more company with eight new inductees. And this, of course, includes David Hawkins, third from the left. His best season as an Al came from 2004 when he averaged 24.4 points per game in his senior year. Good for third best in the entire country that year. And Matt, one of four All-Americans on this list is former lacrosse and field hockey goalie Jill Marple here in the middle. As she is known as Temple's pretty much best all-time goalie and goalkeeper as she is the goaltender who has the most saves and best save percentage in Temple history. This class also includes inductees in women's basketball, football, baseball, softball, and of course the sports we mentioned, lacrosse, field hockey, and men's basketball. This November 4th, the ceremony will pl be placed at the Leah Core Center. The weekend calendar, let's take a look ahead at some Temple matchups this weekend. On Friday, the field hockey team looks to make it three straight when it takes on Providence, and the volleyball team is trying to avoid three straight losses when it matches up with the Cincinnati Bearcats on Saturday. Temple Lacrosse has an off-season doubleheader, first up against Quinnipiac at 11 a.m., then against Bucknell at 2 p.m., before hosting the alumni game at 1.30. It's going to be a busy weekend, Matt. Certainly looking forward to catching up on all those sports and all the athletics coming up this weekend. And that'll just about wrap it up for our show. We'll have updates on our social handles all weekend long. For our entire Al Sports Update crew, he's Eric Jessberger. I'm Matt Renier. Have a great weekend, everyone.